So when we did the Sermon on the Mount, we saw that it appeared in the book of Matthew and then also appeared in the book of Luke. Most of you did not notice this. I intentionally did not mention it. There is a small source of confusion that presents itself between two of these gospel accounts, that is Matthew and then Luke. Scholars have spilled much ink over comparing these accounts as we did, finding parallels between the teachings. However, despite all of these parallels and similarities, one thing has always been puzzling and a matter of great contradiction. Why does Matthew say that the sermon was shared on a mountain where Luke says Yeshua descended a mountain and shared his preaching on a plain or a field? In Matthew 5, in the KJV, this is what we read. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came up unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is what Matthew tells us. He went up into a mountain. Is a sermon on the mount. When we come to the book of Luke, what do we read? And he came down with them. So he's coming down from the mountain, if you read it as such, and stood in the plain in the field. And the company of the disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast, verse 20, and he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Aren't these two things rather opposite? Are the details not opposite? Not at all. Now, Yeshua spoke a Galilean dialect of the Aramaic language. We've talked about this. So, putting the accounts back into this dialect clears up the confusion. So let's look at the Aramaic. The Aramaic says, Now when Esu saw the multitudes, he ascended a Torah. Look at that word, Torah. I want you to focus on that. That is what I've highlighted in a script below, Torah. In most Aramaic dialects, Torah means mountain. That is what it means. It means mountain. In Galilean, it can either mean a mountain or a field. This is the proof of it. In the Galilean dialect that Yeshua spoke, the Galilean Aramaic that he spoke, which is Western, Torah can mean either a mountain or a field or a plain. So as the early oral tradition circulated and were retold many times before they were written down in the Gospels, this kind of confusion could have happened readily. Galilean Aramaic speakers, who were among the first of Yeshua's followers, might not have even caught this without context. The context is what helps. So Galilean Aramaic speakers who were among the first of Yeshua's followers might not have caught the distinction without context. And once the story was translated into another dialect of Aramaic or even another language such as Koine Greek, which is what the New Testament was compiled in, the sense in that telling 
was codified. So now you have that confusion. But if you bring it back, not just into Aramaic, but into Galilean Aramaic, because that is what Yeshua and his disciples would have spoken. So is there a contradiction? Not at all. It seems like that in the Greek. It may seem like that maybe in um, other dialects of the Aramaic. But if you bring it back to the Galilean Aramaic, which is a Western dialect that Yeshua spoke, you would notice that Luke and Matthew could have been saying the same thing. Because Torah in Galilean, which is also spelt a little different, could mean both. 